Venomous or not venomous, Anaka Chronicles Extra. There are a few snakes that look similar in the field. Which one packs a punch and which one is harmless to humans? Here they are side by side. Which one is a pit viper and which one is a harmless cat-eyed snake? A few things that are different between the two species are pits, eyes, shape of the head, and the tail. Another thing that I look for is the stitching between the dorsal scales and the ventral scales. On the pit viper, it looks like someone just took a little thread and stitched along its side. Side by side, it's not too difficult, but alone on a trail, it can seem tricky. Not all pit vipers look like Lucy. Some aren't even green. These three happen to look similar, but they're very different. The Vogel's pit viper, Albalabris, and of course, Lucy and Macross. I wanted to show you the green pit vipers because they're especially different from this little guy, Boiga cyenia, and the babies are so cute. Remember, if you are not sure, always treat as venomous. If you are wrong and it's not, then no harm done. But if the opposite is true, it can get ugly. Take a look at the video showing Lucy and the Boiga in my trees. Hey everyone, so I just wanted to give you um, a little look at the difference between um, a pit viper and a snake that often gets confused with pit vipers actually. So first I'm gonna show you Lucy, which you guys are familiar with, but she's out um, and it's been rainy here all day. So she's got the, uh, I don't know how to turn this around. Oh. <laughs> uh, I guess I don't. <laughs> how do you not turn a video <laughs> in the middle of it? So um, I'm a complete moron, but uh, Lucy's out right now exploring this tree right next to, like right in my yard. So I just want to show you her really quick. Okay, so here you can see Lucy. Um, it's not a great, you can see her body coming through the tree and I'm going to get into her head right now. And you can see her, her eyes and she's tongue flicking and the shape of her head. Now, you can't always go by the shape of their head because a lot of times snakes can, can change, they can flatten themselves out, they can make themselves look a little bit bigger, scarier, because obviously their goal is survival and they don't wanna be eaten. They don't, we're a big scary predator to them. So this is just Lucy exploring the tree. So it's quite rainy and um, you know, the, the, the trees are quite moist and everything. So there she is, and her eyes have quite a yellow. Their pu her pupils are not so dilated. And um, it's kind of dusk right now. The sun's going down. You can see that stitching now on the side as she moves a little bit. <laughs> she comes back. I'm not within strike distance of her, but <laughs> she, she can definitely sense my presence there. Um, part of it is the way she tastes the air using the Jacobson's organ, organ. And part of it is that she, those pits that you can see there, they sense heat. It's quite impressive actually. Um, you can see that the, the head is kind of menacing, I think. I don't know, like when we get to the Boiga, you'll see it's, it's, it's quite different from, from, from Lucy, but you can see a pretty good side view of her there, and it just looks like that stitching right, right on the bottom of her dorsal scales, which are the top scales. The ventral scales are her belly scales. Okay, so look at the boiga. First of all, look how gosh darn cute it is, okay? Um, its eyes are huge, <laughs> because it's the cat-eyed um, snake. It's the green cat-eyed snake. Um, Thailand happens to have um, quite a few species of boiga, actually. At the research station, we had a couple different ones. This is the green one. And the shape of the pupil is very similar. However, 
the shape of the head is very different. You can see that the coloration is a little bit more uniform, not that you always can tell by that. Um, and head shape too, you can't always tell. A lot of times snakes will flatten their head, make themselves look a little bit more scary because we, like I said, we're big scary predators to them. And um, unfortunately the video goes in and out here. I couldn't quite get the camera to focus the way I wanted it to. But you can see by its movements, first of all, it's moving quite a bit more than Lucy ever does. Um, you can also see by the narrow, there's, there's the narrow face, the fact that it's lacking pits. That's a huge, huge giveaway. Um, I don't want to say that it's not venomous. It's just not the same type of venom. Um, it does have a mild venom that helps subdue its prey. However, it's not the same as the pit viper. It's, it's rear fanged. That means those fangs are more towards the rear of its mouth. They're a little bit more fixed. They're not hinged and up front the way a pit viper's fangs are. I'm gonna put it up in the tree and we can get another look at it here. They're so good and adept at climbing. They're really good at what they do. And um, they're not harmful to humans. So though they have a mild venom to subdue their prey, they're not harmful. Um, a pit viper's venom is strongly hematoxic. And there it is. You can see its face, what? perfect camouflage. I mean, it blends right into the coloration of that particular tree for sure. Um, you can see its pupils are also not quite dilated. It's, it's tongue flicking. It's getting a sense of the air, it's tasting the air, smelling the air. Um, you know, it completely and totally senses me there. And the head is quite more slender. The, the scales above the eye so I'm not going to get super tech technical here, but um, there's quite a difference. When we go back to Lucy in the tree, you can see how different the snake is um, as far as the head goes, how narrow the, the nose is, and then look at the scales around the eyes. They're, they almost look like the snake looks angry, if that makes sense, like if it was a cartoon, which it's not a cartoon because it's obviously highly venomous and it's nothing to joke about. but. Um, you know, it is a little bit different. And so here we can see Lucy again. You see that stitching and there's her face. Look at, look at the difference between the eyes, the scales above the eyes. Look at how pronounced her face is. She does look a little menacing right there. And you can see her pits nice and clear. Um, that hole, that opening right in front of the eye allows her to sense heat. And actually it's kind of cool because they're, they're, it is really like a superpower. I know I joke about that and it probably sounds really dumb, but it really is like that because they see, it's like infrared, like we have to use technology and these guys, that's, they sense it and it's quite accurate actually. And uh, even more so than a thermometer, so. Anyway, seeing these guys together side by side, it's kind of easy, but I totally understand. It's not always easy on the trail, but uh, all right, thanks for watching. Here's the Boiga again, um, just exploring. I was trying to capture it drinking. It's kind of tasting the water on the leaves because there was some water dripping from there. Um, just so cute exploring up there. It's just it's just really neat. Such a good climber. Just like a really cool snake.